In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to provision a GPU-enabled TensorFlow workspace. So contrary to popular belief, getting a TensorFlow environment enabled with GPU acceleration is actually not the most straightforward thing in the world. So sure, you have things like Google Colab, which give you, you know, ready access to, to GPU hardware, but that's more of a prototyping environment. So what we're gonna do here is create more of like a VM environment, a virtual machine that runs in the cloud, where you could actually host a service that leverages these capabilities so maybe you run models uh, in the cloud or you train models in the cloud and you want to be able to leverage a GPU device to do so uh, this will let you do that anyways let's get started okay so to reiterate in this tutorial we're gonna be setting up a cloud-based environment a virtual machine where we can run TensorFlow operations using a GPU card, so with hardware acceleration. I have found this to be pretty difficult to get started, so that's why I felt the need to make a tutorial for this. So let's get started here. Um, we're going to be using Google products for all of this, and essentially we're going to be uh, spinning up a Compute Engine instance and also leveraging the, th the hardware that they have. So I'm going to go over to Google Cloud Console. And I'm just going to make sure I am in the Compute Engine section here. And we're going to go ahead and select Create Instance. We're going to call this Tutorial GPU. Okay, so for machine type, I have found that depending on what you're trying to do, the operation in TensorFlow can actually um, get shut down if there's not enough available memory. And I have found 30 gigabytes to be a good sweet spot where I haven't run up against any limits. Um, so I guess, you know, that's dependent on what you're trying to do. Uh, recently, I've been doing a lot of style transfer sort of stuff. so. You know, that's image-based, and those models can tend to be a bit bigger. Um, but if we do 30, we should be good to go. All right, so now here's the key part. <clears throat> we want to add our GPU card. So we're going to do Add GPU. And there's a couple different options here. I'm most familiar with the Tesla K80. And we can just use one for now. Now, just a little background. If we Google Tesla K80 GPU card, this is what you're getting. So this is like a commercial or industrial GPU card. I mean, it's several thousand dollars. This is not a GPU card that is going to be, you know, your graphics processor on your laptop. This is a very different piece of hardware here. Um, I mean, that's what it does. But, you know, as you can see, it's, a, it's at a different different kind of scale. So it's a piece of hardware that you're not normally going to have access to. And Google uh, Cloud Console uh, allows you to get access to it. One thing I will note is at times when you're trying to create these instances, there might not be enough GPU cards available in the particular region that you're provisioning the, the VM instance. And it will just tell you um, not, not enough available resources. So you might want to create a couple of these different VM instances in different regions. So if one um, doesn't have enough resources, you can boot up another one in a different region. And I guess another thing to note is you can see the cost here. So we're at 58 cents an hour. So you really don't want to leave this thing on. And, you know, it's going to be pricey. This is 400 bucks a month. So, uh, yeah, just be cognizant of that. Um, for the actual software, let's do Ubuntu 18, and then let's actually give it some space so we can download some stuff, actually, do 200. And then I always do um, allow full access to cloud APIs and allow HTTP, HTTPS traffic, just to make things easy. Um, okay, let's see here. Da, 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 da. 
All right, I think that is everything. So let's go ahead and create this. Okay, so you can see here they're spinning up the instance. Okay, so it looks like the instance is ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and SSH into our VM instance here. So the hardest part here is downloading and configuring the uh, CUDA NVIDIA drivers. But luckily, Google has come up with all these startup scripts that essentially do that. And they do that for different the different operating systems here, and you can just select them. And I can't state enough um, how useful this is. And, and there's a reason Google has created all these different startup scripts to um, for you to download all the dependencies and the software required to install GPU drivers. Um, frankly, I wouldn't have been able to figure it out without this page here. So um, this will all be in the description, so you can just follow the links in the description. But we have Ubuntu 18 running. Um, and so I'm just going to use the Ubuntu 18 CUDA 10 install script here. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just elevate myself to root sudo su dash, just so I don't have to deal with any access issues. I'm going to go to my root directory here, and this is my VM. So let's just go ahead. So I'm going to copy this whole thing, and I'm just going to paste it and let it rip. And this might take several minutes, but this should get um, all the dependencies and the drivers needed to uh, get the, tes the, the Tesla K80 card working properly. And we'll actually go a little bit above and beyond just installing TensorFlow. We'll, we'll actually set up a Jupyter Notebook where you can, we'll be able to run some test scripts and show you uh, and prove that it's working. Okay, so it looks like everything's downloaded. So, okay, so now we run this NVIDIA SMI-PM1, which is gonna enable persistence mode. And now we are going to install Docker. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I kind of misspoke. We're not gonna install Docker, we're gonna install the NVIDIA version of Docker, which is a little bit different. It's like a branch of Docker. And again, the um, the command is going to be in the description there. So we've downloaded the NVIDIA Docker. So in theory, I should be able to run a Docker command. So I just ran docker ps-a, which is to list out Docker containers, um, of which I have none. So it's just the columns here. Um, but that's the command that we want. So, all right, so now we're going to just test that the Docker runtime can spin up uh, a NVIDIA instance that is communicating with the GPU card. Again, this command is in the description. All right, so I believe this is good. It has found the Tesla K80, and that is the response that we want. So, and we should have that. Uh, actually, no, we terminated the container. So, yep, that's what we want. Everything is installed, everything is good. Okay, so we have the NVIDIA drivers installed. We have Docker installed. So now what we wanna do is just spin up a TensorFlow container that is leveraging the GPU and also will expose a Jupyter Notebook that we can work out of. If we go to the TensorFlow Docker Hub page, they have a number of these. Like actually, this is the one we want. We want nightly GPU Jupyter. The problem is in order to spin up the notebook, um, they expose the notebook on port 8888. And for Compute Engine, by default, that port is shut off. And without getting into having to add a network rule to allow that port, we've just created another container that is exposed on port 80. So it'll just save you some time. So the command to start that is right here. So again, docker 
The runtime is NVIDIA. The username is MacGyver Technology, that's us. The container is TensorFlow-GPU. And then the flavor we want is called Basic Jupiter. We have other tags, but they're, the containers are a lot bigger because they're um, tailored for image analysis and they have like the VGG model and a bunch of training images on them. So they're huge, they're upwards of 30 gigs. So we wanna give you the basic small container. This one's only three gigs. So this is the command. Again, it'll be in the description. We're gonna go ahead and run it. So this, this starts the container, this starts the Jupyter server, gives us an authentication token. We're gonna copy the query parameter here all the way up to the port, copying that, going back over to Compute Engine. And every instance has a IP address, so we're just gonna click the IP address. We're going to append our token and port. We're gonna remove the S, because this is not gonna be over HTTPS. Now we're just going to click enter. So now we have a running log here of what's going on. We're connected um, to our Docker container, which is a Jupyter instance. So the question now is, is TensorFlow in this Jupyter environment going to be leveraging the GPU card? So let's check it out. We're going to go over to TensorFlow Tutorials. We're going to click Classification. If it asks you to set the kernel, just go ahead and set it. That happens sometimes. And we're gonna come over to the second cell here. And I've added this part, which is to list the TensorFlow devices. So we're just gonna click Run. Okay, so we have a CPU. We have accelerated CPU. We have a GPU and an X GPU. So this is what we expect. And this is our device, the Tesla K80. So now if we run some of this training stuff here, um, it's going to leverage our GPU card. So let's see here, let's find the actual. So if I run this, if I run compile, sorry, fit. All right, so this is the actual training here. And so now we can do our development and it's going to be using the GPU card. Now, the, G, the purpose of the notebook here, the Jupyter Notebook, is just to illustrate that we can do TensorFlow development using the GPU. But, you know, we can go into this container, we can write our own scripts, we can have APIs that run scripts in this container, and it's all gonna be hardware accelerated. So now you have a real environment to build a service out of. And so I hope that sheds some light on the um, how you can uh, use a GPU with TensorFlow in a cloud environment. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for listening.